Old Tom Gray here. You might be wondering what are these funny looking things? Look like rabbits with their long ears. Well, they're for holding either your MIG gun or your stinger. They're made out of simple conduit elbow, switch plate covers, and some scrap sheet metal. I'll show you how I did it. To get started, here's our project materials. Two switch block off plates, one for a big box, one for a little box, one for the welding cart, one for the bench, a couple pieces of scrap, a one inch condi elbow, and just some other scraps that I'm going to use. So step one, let's find center of the 40 of the elbow using our very big speed square and our little speed square All right about there. Good enough. Cut that with my little rigid number 15. This stuff's pretty thin, so I'm just going to cut it dry. There we go. To get rid of the burr, I'm just going to use a countersink I'm going to pop the center knockouts out Save these little guys. They come in handy for patching holes. Now's a good time to do all your metal finishing. So I'm just going to take some burned up sandpaper and sand all the edges and make everything nice and smooth. To size the brackets for the stinger, Looks like they want to be two, two and a quarter tall. Just enough to get it in there. And grab and pick up the piece of candy. Okay. I think these pieces of scrap will do rather nicely. All right, let me get these cleaned up and ready to use. It's a job for the flap wheel. And I don't know what that stuff on there was, but boy, is it nasty. I took those outside to buzz them off. Terrible. Anyway, um, so two and a quarter each means we need four and a half. About there, so. I think we can make the arms to hold the stinger about an inch wide. I'll just trim them up out of this with a pair of tin snips. This is 19 gauge. It's about as thick as I would ever like to do with, with snips. Beyond that, I break out the shear or the uh, angle grinder. Just eyeballing this. Look too bad. That edge actually doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, leave that. That's cracked.
four and a half by one. Oh, beautiful. By one. 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 Four and a half. Here, here's a mistake a lot of people make with these tin snips. These are made for nibble on away at edges, not cutting in the middle of sheets. So if you got a wide cut, even like that, if it's more than about a quarter inch, nibble off a piece of it. And then take two cuts at it. It'd be a lot easier. Touch up this one some more. See how nicely that works when you're just nibbling little pieces? Okay, we'll cut these to length. Two and a quarter. About there. Two and a quarter. Right about there. I'm going to dress all these edges, make these all nice and smooth, and knock the galvanizing off of the tubes and the plates so I can weld it. That's a job for the flap wheel. Okay, to position the ears, 
for the stinger. I'm going to lay it flat on the dirty plywood here. Mark top dead center right there. I'm going to come down the width of my speed square flange. I'm going to place it like that. I think I'll come in from the edge that same thickness. Which looks like about a quarter inch. Just eyeballing this. That looks righteous. Okay, so there they are all tacked up. I'm gonna play around with my voltage and wire feed rate and uh, finish welding. All welded up. Nice and cobby. But I go one little weld at a time, one little spot at a time. Otherwise, you'll just warp the heck out of this. This is pretty thin sheet metal, so. Takes a while, but gets her done. So now I'm going to grind all the welds, pretty them up, sand them up. All weld it up and grind it up. Just a couple of finishing touches here. Did get a little warpage. Did get a little warpage, so just taking the good old body hammer and tweaking them until they sit flat. Like so. <clears throat> and then the galvanizing burned off of the inside so just taking a brass brush and knocking all that loose galvanizing out of there here's the test fit so the mig gun going that way the arc stinger going that way so now i'm going to paint them up 
and finish them up. Okay, looks like it's going to be Krylon Fusion 5X all in one gloss red pepper. I kind of like this color actually. So I'm just going to fog it on there. Light coats, a little at a time. Slowly, slowly. There they are. Pretty easy, please. So how are they going to work? Well, when you're using a stinger, nests like that. When you're using a mid gun, goes like that. Let's look at a couple of uh, specific applications beyond this though. So obviously when they're on a bench, you can, you can clamp them down, insert your mid gun, all good. But if you're working on a vertical surface, and my piece of dirty plywood here is simulating a, let's say a wall, a couple of screws, you can go like that if you're using your MIG gun, or you can turn it upside down. use it like that if you're using your stinger. In my particular case, I'm going to take the one with the little base. I'm going to stick four Imodium magnets on it. And it's going to live right here on the corner of my MIG cart. So that while I'm welding, I've always got some place to stick the MIG gun. That's out of the way. Don't have to worry about scratching something else or accidentally hitting the trigger when I rest it on something. So there we are, our little rabbit ear MIG gun and stinger holders are all done. Now they're going to go in service. I'm going to leave this one here and go on to the next project. I will see you there and then.